I bet I at least have a bigger dick than Toon Link. Oh, hi! Today's May 27th, 2017, and if you were to have a poll on what the greatest game in the history of Zelda is, chances are Breath of the Wild would win by a landslide. But is that really true? Or is it possible that Nintendo went a little too far in trying to keep things fresh and forgot what makes a Zelda game a Zelda game? Well, let's find out! Before everybody assumes that I'm gonna bury Breath of the Wild in this video, just hear me out before sending me poorly worded death threats. I love this game. Just look at how many hours I spent playing it. I even bought the DLC recently because I couldn't get enough. I've just been wondering if people will still feel the same way about this game in 5 or maybe 10 years from now. Given the fact that the Legend of Zelda series is notorious for having its fans flip-flop all over the place on how they feel about certain games. Remember when Majora's Mask came out? Everybody, admittedly myself included at first, absolutely hated the time mechanic and would rather have to fight their uncles naked and never be able to explain to them why rather than have to finish this game. But when Ocarina of Time had a 3D remake for, you guessed it, the 3DS, fans started an online petition called Operation Moonfall for Majora's Mask to get the same treatment even though everybody hated it before. And the fan support was strong enough to not only get a remake, but we also got a new 3DS XL model to commemorate the release, which then proceeded to get scalped off the ass on eBay. But how about the Wind Waker? When the world saw the trailer for this unique new cel-shaded Zelda game, people were pissing and shitting all over the place since in their minds they'd been buried two Zelda games in a row. Everybody wanted a Zelda game that was super serious and cool like Lord of the Rings, according to everybody in my high school. Not this kitty crap. So it's interesting to me when everybody pretends like they've loved Wind Waker all along when the HD remaster was announced for the Wii U. But going back to the GameCube and Wii era, fans couldn't wait for Nintendo to give them a super serious Ocarina of Time-ish Zelda game with better graphics. And that's exactly what we got with Twilight Princess. Everybody loved it at the time. And then like two years later, everybody hated it for being too much like Ocarina of Time and criticized it for not being original enough. Myself included, and I still stand by that. After Nintendo tried being different two games in a row, they gave everybody exactly what they wanted, and fans still weren't happy. At this point, fans didn't even know what they wanted, so Nintendo once again tried something different with the next game in the series, Skyward Sword on the Wii. And the entire world rejoiced. It was praised with tens up and down across the board, except for GameSpot. And their score made everybody so mad that GameSpot actually had to take back some of the negative words in fear of being fingered. As bad people for the rest of their lives and anally on the way to their cars. But how did people feel about Skyward Sword about two years later? That's right, many people changed their minds, and to this day, people seem to hate it because it's too linear. Which it totally was, by the way, as much as I did and still do love that game. Nintendo must have been frustrated as hell at this point. They tried surprising fans, they tried new things, they even tried giving everybody exactly what they wanted, but people are never satisfied. And to be fair, that's just because the Legend of Zelda series is held in such a high regard. Fans expect nothing less from such a universally beloved series. And all this criticism really seems to have inspired Nintendo Nintendo to go back to the drawing board with their most recent Zelda title, Breath of the Wild, for the Wii U, Switch, and the Apple Pippin for some reason. The result? A Zelda game that pleases everybody, right? Well, yeah, it's the highest rated game of all time according to Metacritic, so I'd say the fans are happy. For now, I guess. But what about when people get off of the hype wave? Well, that's the point of this video, dummy. I'm not trying to be a dick, I just want to talk about some ways the next game can be improved upon. Because this really is the start of a new Zelda series altogether, if you think about it. There's the 2D Zeldas, the structured 3D Zeldas, and Breath of the Wild is the first open world Zelda. Since they probably won't let two different 3D Zelda series coexist at the same time, I'm hoping they merge the two together. I'm not saying we need to lose any of the freedom, but I think there's some old mechanics that can make the next open world Zelda be even better and, dare I say, more Zelda-like. Because let's face it, this really is just Skyrim with Zelda characters copy and pasted everywhere. I do expect the successor to this game to be a huge deal, and not just because of how many people are going to play it, but by how much they're going to refine the gameplay. Games after the sequel to Breath of the Wild might improve even more, but whatever comes after Breath of the Wild is probably going to be regarded as the best in the series by most people just for being the game to perfect this new formula. Everybody loved Mega Man when it came out, but the general consensus is that 2 is regarded as the best in the series. Not because it is the best, because I don't think that to be the case according to my top 10 Mega Man games list, but because its improvement from the previous game was never as big for the rest of the series. The same thing can be said for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, Donkey Kong Country 2, Bubsy 2, Street Fighter 2, Resident Evil 2, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and the list goes on. When I say new formula, I don't mean to imply that Nintendo invented this. They're just borrowing from other popular games, which I much prefer over forced innovation like in Star Fox Zero. Sometimes other people have good ideas, and I don't think it means there's anything wrong with adding your own twist to it like Nintendo did here. After all, nobody calls platformers Mario ripoffs. But like I said before, if you strip away any Zelda references to this game and call it something else, you probably wouldn't think 
about Zelda when you play it, and I think this issue can easily be fixed. As great as Breath of the Wild was, there's a lot of noticeable problems that nobody seems to talk about right now because it's taboo to say anything remotely negative about this game. Pretty much everybody loves it or hates it on purpose to get attention. I'm happy Nintendo went in a completely different direction, but just because it feels so fresh and different doesn't mean that this new style is definitively better than the older Zelda's more linear approaches in every conceivable way. There's a lot of things I like better in Breath of the Wild, but there's almost just as much that I miss about the other five 3D Zelda games. The main thing I love about Breath of the Wild is the fact that it's non-linear with nothing stopping you from going anywhere on the map after you get the paraglider and key items early on that you'll use for the rest of the game. But getting all of your mandatory equipment early on and not requiring special items for dungeons kind of ruined them in my opinion. It's fun making your way inside of the Divine Beasts, which are now the dungeons in this game, but once you're in there, it's... Pretty fun. Kind of boring. It's not like it's a bad time or anything, and solving the puzzles that are in there is fun and satisfying, but not as much as previous games in the series. There's hardly any enemies trying to stop you, and there's no mini-bosses at all. Yeah, there's some mini-bosses on the world map, but come on, Nintendo, give us something unique for when you're halfway through the dungeons. My biggest complaint on this issue is that I think this is where the game gives you a little too much freedom. As soon as you're inside of the Divine Beast, you have to activate five terminals, and you're free to go wherever you want, and you can activate them in any order you please. Which leads to a lot of backtracking and revisiting the same areas over and over again. The puzzles to all four, that's right, there's only four, Divine Beasts center around controlling their positions to gain access to certain areas. Like I said before, it's alright, but the flow isn't as natural and seamless as before, although the boss fights still kick ace. The best part about the Legend of Zelda series is the dungeons, and the best part about them is how they were structured in both the 3D and 2D games. They were straight up works of art, obtaining keys, solving little mysteries behind each new room you gain access to, filling your map up more and more, until finally getting the boss key and wiping the different unique bosses' asses. It was always exhilarating and very satisfying. Most importantly, though, exploring the dungeons no longer results in getting a new item. The only items you use in this game to solve most of the puzzles are the paraglider, magnesis, stasis, cryonis, and bombs, which are now unlimited for some reason, probably because they're some of the only items you use to solve puzzles. This wouldn't bother me so much, but the same solutions can be applied to 60-80% to 80 of the game's conundrums you come across. Boomerangs, leaves, torches, and hammers are now considered weapons, and there's no hookshot at all. Although these weapons can be useful, they're never at any point in the game mandatory. I just wish they had more key items to create more possibilities for solving puzzles, and I don't think they would have to sacrifice the idea of being able to go anywhere at any time to accomplish this. Just leave puzzles that require specific items to solve inside of the dungeons you find the items in. And it'd be cool to use some of these items for optional puzzles in Ganon's castle that could give you cool rewards. A Link Between Worlds for the 3DS did a great job of giving you access to all the items in dungeons early on by selling mandatory equipment in a shop. Each dungeon required one of these items to complete, but not necessarily to access too many areas on the world map, so you were free to explore wherever you wanted. I think it'd be more fun obtaining the items within the dungeons themselves as opposed to buying them like in every other game in the series, and having the puzzle centered around whatever items are found in each particular dungeon. You can still have all puzzles and locations on the map be accessible with the equipment you get early on, and still have more than just that small initial handful of mandatory items to find in the dungeons. Or they can just have you come back for a few things like the Riddler trophies you need to mark in the Arkham series for when you have the necessary equipment. I mean, I thought it was fine. The bottom line here, though, is that the variety in puzzles in Breath of the Wild doesn't even compare to the rest of the series, and I believe that's because there weren't as many items. Yeah, I know there's 120 optional shrines, and about half of them are great, but the other half of them require the same solutions to complete. I know I can't be the only one that thinks it was straight up lazy for Nintendo to have the same test of strength challenges for so many different shrines. Korok seeds are fun to search for, but don't really count as puzzles in my opinion. Once you find them, it's pretty much one of four or five different solutions every time. This game's very combat heavy, and while I do feel the combat's better now than ever before, I don't see it as a good reason to hold back on the puzzles. Maybe it's because the average person never even finishes the Zelda game. Probably half the people just buy them, cut bushes, beat the first dungeon, and get stuck despite all the help the previous games always offered. Which thankfully isn't shoved down your throat this time around. My guess is that Nintendo's goal was for more people to actually finish the game this time, so that means fewer puzzles. But to be fair, some of the puzzles in this game are the hardest in the series in my opinion, so they don't completely forget about people like myself. And the more combat-focused gameplay means an increase in difficulty, at least for the first couple hours. It's a shame that the difficulty goes down the more you play the game, though. The enemies you encounter in the beginning of the game are pretty much the same ones you'll see until the very end. And the longer you play it, the more upgrades you get, thus making the game easier. I like how they start you off, but it'd be cooler if more difficult enemies would appear later on instead of just stronger versions of the same ones. I still do have fun battling enemies and foraging their body parts, though. And speaking of foraging, that's now a thing, as well as hunting and cooking. And I love it. This is a very welcome new feature to the series that really adds to the adventure feel. I just wish there was poison involved, and that the materials you find could be used to upgrade or repair weapons. The weapons in this game are extremely fragile, and I don't mind weapons breaking since I guess it's something that would happen in real life, but it'd be cooler if they lasted it a little longer, especially the Master Sword. And I also wish the Master Sword and Divine Powers would recharge whenever you're not using them. Realistically, the Master Sword shouldn't require charging at all since, well, it's the friggin' Master Sword. But then you wouldn't even bother collecting other weapons, so... 
whatever. Besides being more fragile than my scrawny ass, I think the weapon system is a big improvement over the other games, but that doesn't mean they can't do better next time. Another big difference from previous entries is the fact that there's so many different outfits you can change into that have various effects. I think it's cool to have different outfits and do different things, but it gets old having to pause and switch them out every five seconds when you get into different situations. I think it's a welcome improvement, but maybe they could expedite the changing process a little more next time. Something that needs way more improvement next time around, though, are the horses. I like the idea of catching them and building trust, but it'd be cool next time if they were the least bit useful. I'm sorry, but what's the point in riding a horse in this game? You can travel like an ass hair or faster, yeah, but you can't climb mountains or cross rivers with them. And every time you see materials you want to forge, you have to dismount to collect them. If you need to travel somewhere fast, it just makes more sense to teleport. And if you're trying to explore, then just climb something high and glide through the area. The only thing that's redeeming about the horses at all is the music. It's really nice. To be honest, it gives me a little bonier, but that's hindered when you have to keep getting off every 10 seconds to fight something or collect shit. Speaking of music, though, where are all the memorable songs that the series is known for? How can people just say that this is hands down the best Zelda in history when there isn't even any memorable music? I understand that having an overworld theme would get old really fast in this game, but it's a bit of a letdown for there to not be nearly as many cool themes for different things this time around. The music we do have is pretty good like when you go to towns, and I think that sometimes less is more, but it'd be nicer to have a few themes that you could hum in your head while you're dropping your dad off at soccer practice or something like that. Let's talk about a few more positives though before you guys shove your fist up my ass. I've gotta praise the frig on a botwa for it seems transitions into different areas. The entire game is basically just one huge area as opposed to requiring load times whenever you go somewhere new. It doesn't matter if you glide from the highest mountain to the lowest point on the map. The game only loads when you start it up, teleport, or enter dungeons. However, the frame rate has noticeable issues that can't be ignored. It doesn't really hinder the gameplay or happen all that often, but it is worth mentioning because it's ultimately just a port of a last-gen game. And while the game looks great and stylized, the graphics aren't necessarily out of this world, so there's really no excuse for a game that looks like this to have frame rate issues in 2017. Most of the time when frames drop, it's while it's raining, but when the rain starts to fall, drop frames are the least of your worries. This is the absolute worst thing about this game, hands down. Everything else I've talked about isn't really a complaint, just things that could be done better next time or things that were delivered more efficiently in previous games, but rain in Breath of the Wild is fucking bullshit. There's not one upside other than sneaking being easier, but who cares? I'm not against games being difficult, but this doesn't increase challenge, it just wastes your time. This game's built around exploration, and when you're exploring new areas, it makes sense to keep going one way rather than to jump around. But then, uh-oh, it starts raining. And that means you can't climb shit without slipping every few seconds. But if you teleport and come back later, you might not remember exactly where you left off. And besides, leaving and coming back kills the flow. There's no outfit bonus to help you, potions, or anything like that. You could build a fire and wait till the morning if you find somewhere covered, but most of the time there aren't even any caves nearby. So what I do is just set the controller down and dick around on my phone for 5 to 10 minutes waiting for the rain to stop. Which is pretty lame. Hmm. New, New photos, photos of the mom, mom from Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> well, <laughs> a man, man does, does have, have knees. Ah! Oh, cool. The rain stopped. <laughs> I know I've said some harsh things about this game, but I played it for well over 100 hours, and I wouldn't do that unless I absolutely loved it. All I'm trying to say is that while this game might still be the best in the series, it's definitely not better in every conceivable way. It's really not even the same thing, and the transition into open world lost a few features that I miss. If we never see 3D dungeons done the way they used to be, then I'll be very sad. However, I do think Breath of the Wild did way more right than wrong, and the 3D Zelda series was getting a little stale in routine. I just think the next game could really benefit by backing off a bit and getting a little more rooted to the Zelda gameplay tradition of games past. So hopefully Nintendo makes the next game a little more Zelda-y. What do you think though? Do you think Zelda could benefit from some gameplay mechanics left out in Breath of the Wild? Or are you just gonna shove your pinky up my butt because Breath of the Wild is the best game of all time hands down with zero flaws? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more if you don't want me to die a slow and painful death. Thanks for watching. See you next week. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.